Hello everyone, I'm Niall Hannan. I'm representing the Honada Basin LTR site. Uh, and I'm gonna talk about some of the um, extreme events um, associated with state change at the Honada um, in the past and some uh, speculation going forward for how extreme events may have, may have influenced uh, state change in the past and, and may do so in future. So um, site news for the Honada, um, Deb Peters, our long-term um, lead PI stepped down earlier this year to focus on um, her ARS um, responsibilities. And I took over as the lead PI, but in a collaborative um, model with uh, the larger executive committee and uh, the PI COI uh, team. And slightly older news now, but um, just to update you, uh, the Honada was on pr probation um, uh, from 2018, um, primarily because of our um, uh, some IM data issues. Um, and over the last couple of years, uh, thanks largely to Greg Mora working with Deb uh, in a huge effort, we've um, we think we've transformed our uh, data and IM systems and are uh, looking forward to uh, keeping those systems going forward. Um, so just to set the context for the Honada Basin, as uh, I'm sure many of you know, the Honada is located in southern New Mexico. Um, we're at the northern, towards the northern extent anyway, of the uh, Chihuahuan Desert, where um, not only uh, low rainfall, but uh, uh, increasing frequency of um, um, frost and freeze events are impacting our systems uh, at irregular intervals. So our, our long-term research context has been this um, change, state change from uh, Chihuahuan desert grassland to shrublands. Um, here represented on the left is the history um, from 1858 through to uh, relatively recent with the, um, with the greens showing grasslands effectively and the orange and reds showing um, shrublands and that increase through time across the Hornada Basin. And to the right um, is uh, similar data, but using aerial photos uh, in the mesquite dominated areas showing that um, shrub encroachment um, trend over um, the last 60 or so, 60 or 70 years. So to so sort of put this in a, a conceptual framework, um, on the left, I'm showing a, a, a kind of typical phase diagram for uh, state change from uh, low herbaceous density shrub state uh, and with the grass um, state considered to be our original state, um, to the upper side of that um, graphic. And the, the transition that I've labeled number one there is what we've what the Honada LTR has been studying for um, uh, the past 35 to 40 years, um, where we, we fairly well established um, some of the extreme events involved in the initial, uh, in the, the shrub encroachment um, trends. Uh, associated with uh, European settlement and grazing, um, heavy grazing and overgrazing, um, droughts uh, interacting with grazing. And those are sort of trigger events that um, shift the, the state um, variable up above or below the, um, the, the thresholds indicated by the dotted line in the left-hand figure. And then the feedbacks have been a, a major feature of our research, um, in particular looking at aeolian connectivity as a reinforcing um, feedback as we lose uh, grass cover, um, uh, dust erosion and nutrient redistribution impacting the ability of grass to um, recruit back into the system. And then a variety of other factors um, across trophic levels involved in those uh, feedbacks, including competitive interactions, uh, granivory, and so on. But the take home message being that um, 
the recovery to grassland is um, is hard to find and hard experimentally to produce in these systems. So um, this this uh, photograph from the early part of last century is a kind of a demonstration of the extreme uh, human um, imposed events um, of heavy grazing in the Hornada Basin. Uh, these were systems that were not heavily grazed, um, in part um, because of lack of water across the basin. Uh, humans came in with cattle and an ability to, uh, or rather, European settlers came in with cattle and uh, um, pumping mechanisms to bring water and cattle across the entire basin. But the question that we're sort of posing now and for this talk in particular is, if, if the Hornada Basin looked like this uh, 100 years ago, um, why uh, or how is it that it seems so hard to recover the grassy state? And if you look at it in another way, um, if the shrub state is so stable, um, why over the, the centuries wouldn't small patches of, of shrub have uh, coalesced to cause a, a state change in the past if the uh, recovery process is so difficult? So um, going to this secondary transition, uh, the recovery from shrub state to grass state, um, we've got kind of two potential um, non-exclusive hypotheses. One is that these um, the triggers and reinforcement mechanisms are there, uh, but we're, we see them rarely and the extreme events um, have not yet uh, uh, or are rare enough that we don't see them often in this system. Another is that the system is changing uh, due to long-term climate change that in effect uh, the grasslands of the northern Chihuahuan desert may be legacies of, uh, of previous climates. So for the, the, the shrub transitions, um, shrub to grassland transition, we've been experimenting with a variety of um, uh, possibilities there. Reduced grazing, um, the Honada has been um, only lightly grazed for many decades now with relatively little um, recovery. Uh, wet years, we see some signs of grass recovery, but again, not, not very strong. Um, events such as uh, frost events that um, Jen referred to for the Sevillata, uh, they occur, but they're not um, um, strong enough, not um, profound enough to shift the system. We are seeing some interactions that are interesting in between connectivity, wet years, and other trophic interactions that could um, be um, uh, could be the, the source, the, uh, the, the processes involved in that um, uh, second shift back to grassland state. Um, and then the, the last, the second hypothesis is that if we, if we think of this diagram on the left, um, that with long-term shifts in climate, um, we may be actually beginning to move out of the bimodal uh, grass and shrub um, options uh, to a system that is primarily uh, in the shrub state, a unimodal state with uh, where ex even extreme events that might previously have shifted the system back towards grassland, even those extreme events may uh, be no longer powerful enough to, uh, um, to recover the, uh, the grassland state. Thank you.